Hello there. My name is Aaron Smiley, and I'll be taking you on a whirlwind tour of Assembly Act, getting you up and running and ready to tackle any creative challenge in the world of vector art. What is Assembly App? Well, it's the premier art design app on your app store. Create logos, icons, illustrations, and more using Assembly's powerful, easy to use features only found in professional desktop software. Today, in this first tutorial, we'll be running through the basics, how to start a new project, navigating the interface, selecting basic shapes, moving and coloring those shapes, and finally exporting your finished work. Since learning these basics, I've gone on to create hundreds of assembly projects. This is the art I'll be building today. It's worth noting, right from the start, I'm using the iPad version. I actually normally use the mobile version, but I'm just using the iPad version because it's easier to record this tutorial. They are exactly the same. Let's open up assembly. Okay, now you've opened up assembly, the first thing you'll need to do is select canvas size. This is really straightforward. Running along the top is a series of rectangles. These represent our different shapes. You can have anything from a square to 16 by nine. I'm gonna go for the size of my iPad. So I'll click on device and then click on horizontal. Now you have tapped on your chosen canvas size, it's time to take you through the four buttons below it. Stickers, shapes, text, and styles. Stickers is a really helpful tool because it gives you the ability to package up your vector art. This then gives you the option to use those shapes in other projects. Assembly also comes with loads of examples from some amazing artists. I mean, I've created an example here and it's this we'll be making today. By tapping on it, it will be placed directly into your canvas. The image is made up of a selection of different shapes located from the basic shapes and the wilderness shapes. The individual elements are placed on the canvas, moved, rescaled and rotated. Let's start by tapping on the semicircle located in the basic shapes. On the right hand side of your screen, you'll notice a group of buttons. Let's tap on each one and see what they do to our semicircle. Starting with a button on the right that has the bin icon on it. With the object selected, Clicking on this button will delete your shape. If you do this by accident, don't worry. In the top right hand corner, you will see a right and left arrow. By tapping on the left arrow, it will undo your last action. And by tapping on the right arrow, it will redo that action. Select your shape again. Now tap on the spanner icon to the right of the bin. This neatly hides these buttons to maximize your canvas space. Above that is the rotate button, identified by a circular clockwise arrow. I love this tool. It precisely rotates your shape 45 degrees clockwise. And above that, represented by two squares, is the duplicate button. Simply select the shape, tap on the button, and it will be duplicated. To move your shape around the canvas, tap on the shape, hold your finger directly on the shape or an area of the canvas that's blank and simply drag your finger around and the shape will move with you. Above that, represented by two triangles, is the flip tool. Select your object, click on the flip tool and the object will flip to the other side. Before we check out what the two arrows above that do, let's quickly pop into styles and give our second semicircle a different color. To change the shape color, simply select the object, then select one of the colors in the below menu. Assembly comes with tons of predefined colors and color groups, as well as the ability to create any color you want. I will go through this in loads more detail in other tutorials. Now let's move the green semicircle on top of the original. Now let's tap on the down arrow. We have now moved our second shape behind the first. To return it to the front, simply click on the up arrow. Let's take a look at the basic controls of the shape itself. We have learned to move it around the canvas by simply holding down and moving it. But there are also buttons located in the corners of selected objects. Let's focus on the top white button with the blue edge. By holding down the button and moving it out, you can make the object larger. And by holding down on that button and moving inwards, you can make your object smaller. 
To rotate it in any direction, just hold down on the icon and simply move around. We now have everything we need to create our woodland scene. First, let's delete our first semicircle. Then take our green one and rotate it round so the flat edge is facing up, as well as making it bigger to fill more of the canvas. Let's now duplicate that three more times. Make each circle smaller. With our style button still selected, change the three colours. All of the semicircles should align neatly to the flat edge of the original. I'm now going to miss out the base rectangles you see on our shape above the semicircle and I'm going to go straight to our woodland scene. Let's go back to the shapes tab and scroll along to the wilderness shapes. Select our first tree, scale up and place it on the flat edge of our semicircle. Duplicate and scale down the size and we'll give those both different colours. Now let's go and get our bear. Change his colour, that looks about right. Now for our tent, that could be a bit bigger and I'm going to change the colour as it's blending into the bear too much. It is a beautiful day in our wilderness scene today so we're going to give this a sun. I wanted to leave the middle bit out to highlight the multiple object selection functionality. It would be a real pain if, say, you had forgotten something in the middle of your scene and then had to move all your objects individually and then again when you were putting them back you'd have to put them all back in the same place. Simply hold your finger down on the blank area of the canvas, drag your finger across the shapes that you want to select and it will automatically select all of them. Now. Simply move those shapes down to make room for your rectangles. Let's return to the basic shapes. Select the thin rectangle and let's change its colour, rotate it round and rescale it so the length is the same as the base of the semicircle. I still need a bit more room so let's select all these again and move them down. Let's duplicate our new rectangle, rescale it and move it into position. I also want to add one more a thin one on the top. I'm going to duplicate it again, change the colour and place it behind the other rectangle. Now I want to nudge it down slightly, but only by a small amount. These arrows here are the nudge tools. With the shape selected, by pressing on these arrows it will move our shape down in small increments. This precision can be super helpful. Now let's change the colour of our second rectangle it's looking good. Now let's just tidy up. Let's move our woodland scene into place. The multi select functionality also gives you the ability to flip, duplicate and move your objects collectively. Finally let's find our heart and put it in place. This is about done. Except for one thing the three semicircles have drop shadows. Go to your styles. Below the colors are three tabs. Fill, stroke and shadow. Tap on the shadow to reveal two sliders and a directional controller. When the top slider position is all the way to the left, it is turned off. Move it right will decrease the transparency. The result is, is that once the slider is all the way to the right, the shadow has no transparency. Moving the second slider makes the shadow more or less blurred. And finally, the directional controller positions your shadow. That's looking pretty good. To export your final image, tap on the burger menu in the top left. Tap the export button. I like to choose a PNG. It's a bit like a JPEG. Uh, it's a standard file and you can use this file for anything from sending us an email, posting on social media, it's a great multi-use file type. Or save as a vector, as an SVG, uh, this will be able to be imported into your Illustrator file or any other applications you have that can deal with vet vector artwork. You can also save as a sticker. You can do this by selecting your object and going into the stickers area or once you've selected your objects and grouped them, 
you'll see there is a sticker button there. You click on that sticker button and hey presto, it's saved in your stickers. I will go through these export settings in loads more details in future tutorials. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. We can't wait to see what you create and please share with us either on Instagram or within the app itself. See you in the next tutorial.